Welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. I'm Kendra Havens. I'm a program manager on the .NET team. Um, I'm here to talk, you, talk to you about ASP.NET Core and Visual Studio for Mac. So first I'll do a quick overview of the benefits of ASP.NET Core. That includes its cross-platformness, its modular framework design, and the open source community that surrounds it is absolutely fantastic. Then I'll go over the cool features that we introduced for this release of Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, that includes HTML and CSS and uh, JSON editing uh, has been improved. And the round trip from Visual Studio for Mac and Visual Studio on Windows uh, is looking really good. Then we'll talk about the publishing to Azure app service that we added to VS for Mac and Docker support, which is in preview. I'm going to be really excited about it, but it is still in preview. <laughs> we added Docker support as well to VS for Mac. Um, and that includes debugging in a container. And then I'll demo it. It'll be great. First off, let's talk about ASP.NET Core. If you're not familiar with ASP.NET Core, that's the web stack that we built on top of .NET. So the whole idea behind it is being able to write c -sharp source code, and it'll run everywhere on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Pretty good stuff. ASP.NET Core is also built with a modular framework design. Now, this is part of modernizing the web apps today. It's, always, it's all about uh, components and separating your APIs and all that into exactly what you need and being able to trim down your stack to what you actually want to ship with. So essentially, uh, since it's a modular framework design, it actually ships as a collection of NuGet packages. That's how you can trim it down. Um, so this model retains uh, flexibility, and the smaller app surface uh, provides tighter security with reduced servicing costs and improved performance. Um, another great thing about ASP.NET Core is the awesome community. Actually, a lot of you are probably watching right now. So hey, guys, awesome job. You guys rock. <laughs> um, we have a great GitHub community. People go online and submit feedback and issues and interact directly with the product team, which is an absolutely fantastic um, outcome of going open source. We actually have uh, ASP.NET community standups every uh, few weeks, I think, or every week. Um, and actually, the my bosses, the top dogs <laughs> on it, um, talk about where they think the product is going. A lot of times, they uh, talk about cool contributions that the community has made, blogs and samples and products all built on or around ASP.NET. And it's really community focused, which is great. Um, oh, also, one number that we love throwing out there. Uh, .NET contributions, new .NET contributions are 60% of them are made by the community. So that's obviously we rely on you guys and there's just a really good relationship there. Um, so if you are a .NET Core developer, you're probably really excited about .NET 2.0 preview release for build. Um, so that's going to be uh, bringing in the .NET Standard 2.0 uh, that will provide more API coverage. Um, and uh, oh, and if you don't know what uh, the .NET Standard APIs are, that's what we're calling the shared APIs across the .NET ecosystem, .NET Standard. OK, uh, now let's talk about Visual Studio for Mac. So the team has put a ton of work into making this, giving this whole experience a native Mac app feel. So that involves actually adhering to Apple's design language and their fonts and their menu placement. And the debug button is on the top left of the screen. And your build output is at the top. Like if you use iTunes, where you would like pause and start a, a song or whatever, that's where your build output would be. It's very, very cool. I didn't know until I tried it out. And I was like, this looks amazing. Um, so another thing that's improved on the on Developing ASP.NET Core apps in Visual Studio for Mac is now we have HTML, CSS, and JSON editing that looks exactly like it looks um, on Visual Studio on Windows because we're using the Roslyn compiler to generate that IntelliSense. So I'll demo that later, and it'll look great. <laughs> Another aspect that we focused on for Visual Studio for this release in Visual Studio for Mac is giving a round trip experience. Um, 
on par with Visual Studio for Windows. So this just means I can create a solution in Visual Studio for Mac and open it in Visual Studio for Windows and have the same uh, project and the same files and everything is connected just like I want it to be. Um, this is going to be super helpful for teams that have developers on a bunch of different operating systems. So that'll be great. Um, another thing I'm going to show you in my demo is publishing to Azure App Service. Now, this will allow you to rapidly publish changes to the cloud and rapidly scale and manage apps with one backend. So that'll be great. Um, also, for this release, now I got to tone down my enthusiasm because it's only in preview, but Docker support in preview has been added to Visual Studio for Mac. This actually means you can debug through a container. I love seeing containers transform a dev workflow, so I'm excited to show it to you. And with that, I think we can switch to the demo. So this is the Visual Studio for Mac preview. You can see at the top, uh, this is where your output window is. Let me go ahead and initialize the first project. So you can see this dialog box is sort of what you would expect to see in a Mac app. I'll go ahead and initialize an ASP.NET Core web app. See, it has a little C sharp and F sharp drop down. And I'll give this the very unassuming name of Web App 4. <laughs> and you can see over here in preview, it actually displays what you're going to see in the Solution Explorer before it generates it. So if I unclicked Get Version Control, you can see it took out those files. So let me go ahead and demo the CSS editing experience that we have now. So there's my site.css file. And as soon as I type padding, boom, it appears. So responsive. There we go. And you also probably want to see the HTML editing experience. So I'll go ahead and open up my index, CSHTML. And let's see. That will do a line, and then a line. There we go. Editing. Oops. So that looks pretty good. I'll erase that so when I run it, it doesn't look crazy. Um, and the next thing that I wanted to show you was. Uh, the JSON editing experience as well. So there it is. Pops up with exactly what you would expect to see there. Um, another thing that we enabled in Visual Studio for Mac is actually being able to edit your CS proj. Now this used to be um, you had to you used to have to unload the project in Visual Studio on Windows, and uh, we recently made it so that you could edit the CS proj uh, just by right clicking on it and uh, choosing Edit File. And we brought that over in Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, so there's the CS proj targeting NetCore app 1.1. Um, now, since I just created this um, web app 4, I actually want to show you the round trip on Windows. And I have Windows running in parallels. So there it is. I just created it. And I can just double click on the solution that I generated from Visual Studio for Mac. And it will open in Visual Studio 2017 on Windows. And it'll load build assets. There we go. Looking pretty good. And I could build and run it and everything, but that's all stuff that you've seen before. How about I show you publishing to Azure App Service? So make sure you have your project selected right here, not the solution file. And you can go to Build and select the Publish arrow and select Publish to Azure. Now, I already had a service pre-created for this. It's very easy to set up with Azure App Services in your Azure portal. That's a look at mine. I've tried out this demo a few times just to make sure I got it right. There it is. So all I need to do here is select the service I set up and hit publish.
And you can see it has a publishing to Azure dialog in the output there. And it will automatically bring up the browser that my website is running in. Boom. Oh, I love when it happens right as I finish my sentence. It's almost like I planned it. So good. <laughs> Yay, so now we have an ASP.NET Core uh, model view controller project running in an app service that's actually on azurewebsites.net. That is a part of um, my Azure subscription. So here, there's so much here. I'm sure there's going to be many more build demos on exploring all of app, what app services has to offer. So let's go ahead and talk about Docker support. Uh, in order to add Docker support in Visual Studio for Mac, all you need to do is right-click on your project, select Add, and go down to Add Docker Support. And let me just say this one more time, it's in preview. But clicking on it will generate the Docker file itself for you. We use the ASP.NET Core 1.1 image. This is actually a Linux image that runs on Debian. Um, in order for this all to work as well, you need to have Docker for Mac installed. Um, but once you do, it will generate all of your lovely Compose files that enable debugging uh, through your container. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, as soon as I hit this arrow, it'll actually be building my Docker Compose file as it debugs. Um, this usually takes a couple seconds when the app is brand new and it's never built inside of its image before. Um, but after this, it actually happens much, much faster. It's a matter of seconds. Uh, this is part of how containers can really affect developer flow. There it is. Um, because it does spin up so fast. So I can actually debug through this. Oh, and just saying, um, this is my local host, but this port that is mapped here um, is actually a port on my container IP address, which is very cool. Uh, so I can go ahead and stop this, and I can set a breakpoint. So let's go ahead and set that on my home page. Uh, let's set it when we go to the About. And I can hit Debug again. And since the Docker Compose project is still there, it's still set to debug through a container. So it'll spin up an entirely new container this time. So completely fresh environment. This is super helpful for when you're running tests inside of it. And I can, there it is, I can debug an ASP.NET Core uh, project through a container. And as soon as I hit the About page, boom, it actually triggered that breakpoint. So thanks for watching. Uh, you can check us out on GitHub at ASP.NET or .NET, uh, as well as please download Visual Studio for Mac and give it a try. Um, you can see any of these sessions on Channel 9 and I have our ASP.NET stand-up link right there, live.asp.net. Thanks for watching.